Our overarching aim is to know everything about a function. We want to know where it's increasing and decreasing. We want to know where its maximums and minimums are. We want to know exactly how it curves up and how it curves down. All of that can be found using calculus. So let's start by examining when or where a function is increasing and decreasing. Okay, well, when a function is increasing, that means it's going up and to the right. We don't know much about how that's happening. But the one thing we know is that the derivative is greater than zero when a function is increasing. Similarly, we might have a decreasing function and uh, maybe it goes something like that. We might not know much about this function, but the one thing we do know is any time it's decreasing, that derivative will be less than zero. Thus, if we just focus on the derivative and analyzing where the derivative is greater than zero and less than zero, or positive and negative, we can determine where a function is increasing and decreasing without ever having to see the graph of that function. So let's try an example. Find the intervals on which f is increasing and decreasing. And then we're given f of x equals x cubed over 3 minus 5x squared over 2 plus 4x. Okay, well here are the steps we follow. First we find the derivative. Next we find the critical points and use those to define regions. And then lastly we use test points to check each region and determine whether or not the function is positive or negative in that region. So let's go through this. Okay, well we can take the derivative here. This function is actually set up quite nicely for a derivative, I have to say. Uh, using the power rule that gives us x squared minus 5x plus 4. And there's the derivative. Now we want to find the critical points. Remember that the critical points is where the derivative is either equal to zero or undefined. So here it looks like we're only looking at zero. This is a really nice trinomial. And look at this, it even factors, right? How kind, okay, x and x. How about minus four minus one equals zero. So then our critical points are x equals four and x equals one. Okay, so what this does is define regions on the number line for our function of interest, right? Because anytime the function equals zero, well, what could be happening? The function could be going up and then turning around and coming down, or going down and turning around and coming back up, or neither, right? It might be something like this. But uh, when the derivative is zero, usually something interesting is happening with that function. So we'll set up regions and check the derivative and those different regions to see if we can discern what's happening. Okay, so there's our number line here, and we might have zero down here just for a reference. And then our, our main boundaries are one and four. So we'll just kind of do it like this. So now we need to find test points in each one of those regions, and then we'll feed those test points into our derivative to figure out what's happening in the region. You may recognize this technique from when you did graphing functions back in pre-calculus or some other class prior to calculus. Okay, so let's find test points in each region. Uh, well, in this first region, let's do x equals zero. That's a nice test point. Anytime you can use zero, you should use zero, but any point in this entire region will give you the same result. Between one and four, let's do two. And how about x equals five to the right of four? Right, you can choose any point you want, you just can't choose points on the boundaries. Okay, now we'll test our regions. This is, this is what's known as a sign chart. We essentially have our x in one column here, and then we have our f of x maybe over here. So let's do uh, f of x is what, x minus four. I guess this is x pri x, uh, f prime of x, but keep it in its factored form. Okay, so that's I guess that's important. We're, we're plugging into f prime of x, not f of x. So that's a big deal here. So don't want to understate that. And then we use our test points. So what do we have? 0, 2, and 5. And we don't need to compute what the derivative is. All we need to know is if it's positive or negative. So I'm plugging 0 here into this factor and this factor. So I'm plugging it into x minus 4 and x minus 1. When I do that, well, x minus 4 is negative. x minus 1 is negative. Negative times a negative gives us a positive. So it's positive in that region. We can even go down here and fill it in with a positive to remind us that the whole region is going to be positive. 
So our function is increasing in that region. Okay, now we plug in two. Again, we don't need to know what the function is. We just need to know if these factors are positive or negative when we plug in x equals two. Well, two minus four, I don't care what that is. I just know it's negative times two minus one. Well, that's positive. And I know that negative times positive gives us a negative. So this whole region here between one and four is negative. And moving on to x equals five, plugging it into our factors, we get x minus four. Well, that's positive times x minus one. That's still positive. And of course, positive times positive gives us positive. Okay, so this whole region here from four off to infinity is going to be increasing. Well, how do we present our answer? We want to use interval notation to say where the function is increasing and decreasing. So let's do that. I'll clear out some room here. Okay, so let's determine where the function is increasing. Well, that's any time we have positive derivatives here. So that looks like it's going to be these two intervals. Let's put in interval notation. So how about negative infinity up to one? And then we'll use the soft bracket because it's not increasing or decreasing at one. It's actually a constant right at that point one because at one the derivative was equal to zero. Okay, then we union that together. So that means we skip over the middle part and start here at four, again with the soft bracket. We're not including four and off to infinity. Those are the intervals on which this function is increasing. Okay, for decreasing, we only have this middle interval here where it's negative. So that's going to be from one to four. Again, I won't include the endpoints because at one and four themselves, the derivative equals zero, which means it's technically constant at those points. And there you have it. Let's take a look at a graph of this function in Desmos to interpret these results visually. So you can see our function here in blue, and then I've drawn in vertical lines at one and four. And you can see that indeed the function is increasing to the left there from negative infinity to one and then also from four off to infinity, and then in the middle chunk there between one and four, it's decreasing. So our graph matches what we found in our calculation, which of course is what we'd expect because calculus works after all. But what this is all leading up to is we'll eventually use all these properties of derivatives and all this to graph the functions ourselves. So if we can know enough about a function, we can just create this whole graph. So that's what we have to look forward to.